In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Good people, it is the 60th day of December in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2021, Monday. And we are picking up from where we ended on Saturday. And we are looking at what we need to do to be able to get ourselves fixed when we are in spiritual turmoil. And we did end with the point on distractions. And allow me to say something that I would have forgotten. Uh, that is, um, many times we talk about distractions in spiritual development. And we always say that uh, when you are going to pray, it is always advisable that you plan. You plan your life. You plan your life. Plan your prayer session. Plan. Strictly plan. You don't just wake up and go to pray. Plan. In the planning, that is where you are able to take care of distractions. Because some may be beyond you. So that in the event, you realize that there are some distractions that are beyond you, then you plan for the insulation. We talk about the insulation. The insulation is when you are in a point where there is a lot of distraction and there is nothing you can do, but you have to pray. So what do you do? You work on insulation. That is important. But then we said, we also have to be cautious that we are not our own distraction. That would be very, very bad. Number 14, for those who are hurting from grief and loss, you have to make the decision to let go of your loved ones. How do you do this? You may need somebody to journey with you. This can be tough. Processing the loss of a loved one can be tough, very tough. And it can deny you of joy. It can put your, your, your faith and your vocation at a serious crisis. So it is important that you release them. Many a times, you may not be able to do it on your own. So what do you do? You get a professional counselor to take you through the period of grief and how to release a loved one. This is not just an issue of prayer, that, uh, Father, we are praying for you, or I will pray for you. No. At some point, if not always, you may need to go through the process of counseling. Number 14, listen, learn to listen to God's voice. You know, there are four, four, Four. There are four voices we hear in our minds. Number one, our voices. Number two, other people's voices. Number three, the voice of the devil. And number four, the Holy Spirit's voice. Remember, when the devil speaks to you, it is impure, it is sinful, and it is tempting. When you obey his voice, you will fall into sin and you lose peace. So, resist any negative voices because negative voices cannot come from God. They cannot. Learn to listen to what he says about you because what you say about yourself and what others say about you may be contrary to who you are. Remember, when all is said and done, when all is said and done, he has the final say. Number 15, be obedient. Again, there are four ways 
we do things my own way, other people's way, the devil's way, and the Holy Spirit's way. The best cause is to listen and follow the Holy Spirit in order to do things that please God. We do not belong to ourselves. We belong to him. And the more reason we should always be obedient to his voice. Live as if you have only one year to live during your entire lifetime. You live as though you have only one year. So what can you do? Today ask yourself, if you are to be told that you have only one year to fix your life and uh, prepare for heaven, what and what would you do? Those things that you would do or how you would live that one year, make it, make it your habit that it becomes that that is how you live your life all the time. Keep on inviting Jesus in your life. Whatever you do, invite Jesus. Let him be part of your journey and let him be the one who guides you. In everything you do, invite Jesus. In your thought process, invite Jesus. In your actions, invite Jesus. In your worship, invite Jesus. In your sleeping, invite Jesus. In your waking, invite Jesus. As you work, invite Jesus. As you rest, invite Jesus. At all times, invite Jesus. Thank you. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.